Happy Sabbath, everyone. God is so good. All the time and all the time. God is good and all the time. Do you believe that? Okay. Um, God has been so good to me this week and for my entire life. So I welcome you to think about the countless blessings, the, all the encounters that you've had with God personally, where he has shown you grace, he has shown you love, mercy, provided for you, and join us in praise and worship this morning.
Stand for the oh, okay. We sing that later. Jesus. And now there is sound. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, I just want to say welcome to everyone today. Welcome to those joining us online. And welcome to everyone present here today. This is a very special service today. It is an ordination service of one of our hard-working elders. Amen? Amen. And we give God the praise, the honor, and the glory. Now, I just want to recognize some faces I'm seeing, and I don't have everybody's name, but I just want to recognize you. And so, first and foremost, where um, Elder Gwen serves as the coordinator for...
Thank you, Ms. Hidden Mountains. Uh, may I introduce myself for those who are new here? I'm Preston Handy, um, the head elder of this uh, Kenilworth Church. Um, I'm glad to be able to present Elder Gwen this morning uh, because she's well known among us here. She's been a very busy person, actively working in this church for many years. And you know, uh, only in December of past, I went home for a visit. And as I was thinking one day, this person says to me, Hey, why don't you suggest to pass when he comes back that Elder Gwen be ordained? So I spoke to Pastor as soon as he came back. And when I started saying it to him, he was saying, Brother Handy, it's the same thing I want to say to you. And so Elder Gwen, we all are seeing that you are ready for this, this, this ordination time and to be fully accepted in service to God in the church here at Kendallworth. So this morning, we proudly present you uh, for ordination here in our church. But let me present to you uh, our bio. Give me five minutes to do that. Get the inference. And by the way, uh, some of the names might be different because I'm not from Jamaica. <laughs> so some names might be different, difficult. All right, Elder Gwen is a native of Jamaica, born in the cool hill of, of hills of Brandon Hill, uh, Clarendon, and is the 10th of 11 children born in a Seventh-day Adventist parent home of Christopher and Rebecca Newell. I thought we were many, were 10 of us, so you beat us with that. Our parents were active foundation members of the congregation at Brandon Hill SDA Church, serving in various positions of leadership. It is to be noted that the church at Brandon Hill was planted in, by her grandmother, Mary Newell, who, did, who, who uh, deeded the church the first plot of land upon which the church was built. Elder Newell, a, grand, a graduate of the North Caribbean University with Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, is currently reading for and in the final stages of completing a Master's of Science degree in, a public, health, in public health. She has served the church in many positions across several departments, including Superintendent, Superintendent of Staff School, AY Leader, Pathfinder Director, Church Clerk, Community Service Leader, Social Committee Leader, and Personal Ministry Leader. And today she's serving in the Food Bank as a Food Bank Coordinator. First baptized at the age of 11 years, she re uh, regrets having allowed the church to move on without her during her early adulthood years. However, she never lost sight of the Lord, and even in those wandering years, she experienced the goodness of God. Since rendering her, her, her life to God, Gwen has become very passionately involved in service. After graduation from the Ontario Conference School of Evangelism and Dis Discipleship, she became an active member of the Ontario Conference Lay Evangelism Association, serving in social direction, as social director. Elder Gwendolyn, who serves as OASIS group, that is Ontario Adventist Social, uh, Socially Interactive Singles, as chaplain and, and president, totally committed to soul winning activities, traced the book of, uh, trace, sorry, trace the book of distribution, Bible studies, and personal evangelism. Elder Gwen can be found pulling her little wagon uh, behind her, filled with tracts and scriptural pamphlets to share with the neighborhood. She is blessed with a wonderful gift of hospitality and enjoys hosting guests in her home, surely having entertained angels unawares. She is a fabulous cook, and <laughs> amen. I need to come over there with some food, says Elder Gwen. Okay, she's a fabulous cook, and the, the, 
adored mother of three, of three, Sheldon, his wife being Colleen, Tikan, husband, Jesse, and Giovanni. Tikahan and Sheldon have uh, provided her with seven precious grandchildren. She's also devoted to her adopted daughter, Marsha, in Jamaica, treasured siblings of eight brothers and sisters. Auntie Gwen lovingly uh, cherishes the over 37 nieces and nephews in the family. Elder Gwen, a member of the Kenwood Seventh-day Adventist Church, thinks nothing of, of, of traveling more than an hour each Sabbath, each Sabbath morning to get to church from her home in uh, Beaverton. Yes, and I remember that. As far as I drove there once. Very far. She regularly hosts Sabbath school lesson discussion, both on Zoom and in person. She's actively involved with the food bank allocated, allocated in the basement of the church. Elder Gwen is a devoted Christian and a lay preacher, always on the battleground, battlefield for the Lord. She has completed, uh, sorry, completed a program of certified natural nutritionists and is available for consultations. She's a former banking administrator who was, has successfully trans, uh, transitioned from finance to healthcare. Elder Gwen would like to acknowledge the many uh, pastors and elders who have uh, positively impacted her life and propelled her towards her call uh, to serving Jesus Christ. Of special note, Pastors Claude Brown, Everett Brown, Daniel Pink, uh, Rufus Anderson, uh, Donovan DeCosta, Ronnie Henry, Horace Wilson, Derek Nich Nichols, Jason Levy, and now Pastor, our beloved Pastor, Wendell Montague. Oh, there's also a couple more. Uh, there's Fitzroy Maitland, Ronald Hazelwood, uh, who taught her in the OCLE evangelism classes. In ministry, she exemplifies 1 Corinthians 3, 6 to 9. I planted, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Now we who plant and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. Elder Gwen desires to see everyone in God's kingdom and is working to spread God's love to everyone she meets. Throughout her life, Amidst all its ups and downs, there has been one constant, God. He has been there with her all along, even when she was not being obedient to his call. The song our children are going to sing in her personal testimony is her personal testimony of God's leading in our life. Elder Gwen, may God continue to bless you as you continue to serve him. And we are here to encourage you and to be there to work with you along the way that together we will see God's work accomplished in this vineyard. May God bless you and may everything go well as we continue in this program this, this morning. God bless. morning church the scripture reading this morning is taken from John chapter 15 that's John chapter 15 verse 1 to 5 and I'll 
you're reading, you're hearing. I am the true vine. And my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes it away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. That it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. In the last verse, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bear much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. There ends the reading of God's holy word. Before, we, before I introduce the speaker of the day to us, um, I just want to recognize a few more persons, and I want to add special welcome to my very good friend and batchmate, Dr. Tika Ann Haynes. Uh, please stand, Doc, and your husband, uh, Jazzy, Amen. and children, Amen. right? Amen, brethren? And she's the daughter of Elder Gwen. Amen? Amen. Welcome. Welcome to Kendallwood. Nice to have you. Nice to have you. And um, I just want to also welcome um, MVP Lauren Cole. Amen? Amen? Nice to have you. Welcome. Welcome, as always, to Kendallwood. Truly happy to have you. Today we are blessed to have a man of God in the house. Amen? And I want to let you know that I have great appreciation, respect, and love for this brother. What I know about him is that he is, one, a hard worker. Amen, church? And that is known across Ontario Conference. So if you don't know, you're late. Amen? Now, uh, he's also uh, someone who you can really depend on. As busy as he is, I want you to know that he has the entire Ontario uh, conference to oversee in the capacity of uh, risk management and property management. And as you heard that, you know that that's no easy task, right? And it's not an, it's, it's a lot of risk to manage God's people. <laughs> but indeed, I believe that the Lord has chosen the right man for the job. And sometimes um, I wonder how he sleeps because there is always a lot coming to his desk. But praise the Lord, he's so committed, hardworking. And even for here at Kendallwood, in the restructuring of our food bank and getting things on track in the right manner, that he has been very instrumental. I want you to know that he is 
not only the director of risk management and property management of Ontario Conference, but that is also someone who is committed to preaching God's word. He, he loves the Lord, and I know God loves him. And he shields him, he protects him. Amen? Amen. He is the happy, happily married husband yes. of one wife. Amen. <laughs> One wife. And indeed, he is also a proud father of two beautiful daughters. I want you to know that we're speaking of none other than Elder Kevin Bento. I believe God has laid a, a message on his heart for all of us today. And I believe at a time such as this, as we are laying aside a servant of the Lord for service, it is indeed an opportune time. And so may as you present God's words today, Elder, may you not hold back, but where the Spirit leads you, I pray that you will go. May all of us, as we listen today, let us pray for our Elder and that the Lord will continue to be with him. I just want to let us know that, um, I know that you have a little trouble looking all the way up. Amen? But we have a plan so that you could look a little lower. Amen, church? And so, just remember, as you give to the Lord, you give to the Lord for an instrument that will help us all to look a little lower. Amen? So as we listen to the message, may the Lord bless us. But before Elder speaks to us, we'll be favored with a song of meditation. Thank you. Praise the Lord. You know, this weekend, uh, in our, mind, our minds are uh, on the sacrifice that Christ made for us. Our, our, our minds are really taken back to Golgotha. And so today, uh, this song I, I'm singing will be just a capsule on the life of Christ. And as you listen, I pray that you'll be blessed. They looked at him and saw a simple man, a carpenter with healing in his hand. They saw him calm the sea and heal the dying man. They saw. But did they really understand? They could not. They could not. Though they tried, they could not. He was just a simple carpenter, but with healing in his hand. But could they really understand? They could not. They listened to the teachings that they heard. They at the mystery of his words. They wondered what he meant about a father's plan. They heard, but did they really understand? They Oh, they 
there's anybody else here who is pleased and privileged and excited that they could not keep him in the grave. Amen. I am so excited to be here with my Kendallwood family. It's my first time I'm here in this capacity. So uh, forgive me if I'm shining like the sun. I'm spinning like gold. I'm, uh, I'm so happy to be with you this morning. Amen. 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 I want to thank your pastor, Marvelous Montague. Where is he? <laughs> For giving me the opportunity to speak to you on this uh, special occasion. I know I don't have much time, but as was mentioned, my name is Kevin Benton. I'm the Property and Risk Management Director for the Ontario Conference, and I have a custom. Amen. And that is to greet you on behalf of our prolific president, yes. Elder Yakov Obilovich, yes. our engaging Executive Secretary, Elder Emil Maxi. Our trusted and tenacious treasurer, Madame Vereen Miko. Our visionary vice president, Elder Mansfield Edwards. And all of the other dynamic directors and sensational support staff at the Ontario Conference, I wish you, our Kendallwood family, a very happy Sabbath. And I congratulate you, Elder Gwen, on this next phase of your ministry. Let's go to work. There's a young boy who lived in a big house with his father. He was always curious about his neighborhood because in the back of his house, there was this big building that blocked his view. And one day, the gardener left the door open. <laughs> what do you think the young boy did? He ran through the gate and he began to explore the neighborhood. And he was so excited at first because he'd never experienced anything. 
He had all of this freedom and he was experiencing things and seeing things that he never saw before. But as he was exploring the neighborhood, he got lost and he began to long for home and he began to cry. Just the police officer saw the young boy and said, son, what's wrong? He said, I'm lost and I can't find my way home. He says, okay, no problem. What is your address? Young boy said, I don't know, Mr. Officer. I don't know. I says, okay. What's your phone number? I don't know. Okay, okay. What's the name of your mom and dad? What do you think he said? <laughs> mom and dad. <laughs> the officer said, son, if you don't know your, your address, your phone number, you only refer to your mom and dad as mom and dad, it's going to be hard to help you. <laughs> Where are you going? He felt like a blind man in a dark room looking for a black cat that's not there. He felt totally hopeless. You ever feel like that? Totally hopeless. Oh, Mr. Officer, I remember something. I remember something, Mr. Officer. I remember something. What, son? What, son? What, what, what? Say, I remember in the back of my house, there's this big building. And on top of that building, there's a cross. So if you take me to the cross, Mr. Officer, I can find my way home. I don't know where you are today. But Elder Gwen, my Kenwood family, I've come to take you to the cross. I've come not only to take you to a cross, but to a man on a cross. His name is Jesus. So I hope that you will hear Jesus. You will see Jesus. You will have an encounter with Jesus. You will accept Jesus. If you walked away from him, you would return to him. I come to lift up Jesus. And my topic today is vignettes from the vineyard. And as the sermon title indicates, I'm going to be giving you some evocative, brief descriptions of a particular passage of scripture that will prepare us to live right so that we can be with Jesus when he comes again. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, once again, all that I am, I place into your hands. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. And may your words be in my heart like fire shut up in my bones. Speak now, God, for we, your servants, are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have your Bibles with you, whether it be a hard copy or digital, go with me to John chapter 15. Our scripture reading was so eloquently done. I must let you know, I look to my left and tell me who I saw. My beautiful wife and daughter. <laughs> Welcome, honey. My daughter is hiding. I also must let you know the wonderful thing about this family of God is you encounter church aunties and church mothers and church fathers. And I have with me one of my church mothers, Sister Linda Henry. Where are you? Just wave at me, Sister Linda. I know she's, there she is. We've got, gotten very close through circumstances that have uh, swept through her life, but she has become near and dear to me. So good to see you, my wife and daughter, Cheyenne. Wave at me, Cheyenne. <laughs> John chapter 15, John chapter 15, John chapter 15. But I need to give you some context. Uh, and forgive me, I'm a nightmare for cameramen, I know. I do not like to stay tethered to the pulpit, is that okay? Yeah. Amen. John chapter 15, but I got to give you some context. I know I don't have much time, but I got to give you some context. The context of John chapter 15 goes back to John chapter 13. I don't have time to read it, but let me tell you what happens in John chapter 13. John chapter 13 describes what we know as the... Last Supper. Uh-huh. So Jesus is with his disciples. He's, he's washing their feet and he's, he's talking about who's going to betray him. And he's doing all of these wonderful things. And the theologians call John chapter 13 and 14, they call that the upper room discourse. I, I suggest that you go and read that. We don't have time. But there are some amazing things that Jesus says in John chapter 13 and 14. We come now to John chapter 14, verse 31. 
And it ends by Jesus saying, arise, let's go from here. So, so they're leaving the upper room in John chapter 15 and they're going somewhere. Where are they going? I'm so glad that you asked. You've got to go to John chapter 18 verse 1 and you will learn that Jesus and his disciples cross the Kidron Valley and they enter a garden. Which garden? I'm so glad that you asked. They enter the garden of Gethsemane where Jesus is going to be betrayed. So, so, so John's chapter 15, 16, and 17 take place on the walk from the, the Last Supper to the garden where Jesus is waiting for him. So he shares with his disciples some important words. And uh, when we, I know we don't celebrate Easter here at Kendallwood, but if we did, <laughs> this is a part of the story that we leave out. We don't talk about Jesus' instructions from the, 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 the upper room to the garden. And I would think if, if Jesus is given some instructions at this point, they've got to be important. Ah, I'm so glad you're with me. Now let's go back to John chapter 15. Jesus starts and says, I am the vine. No, he says, I am the true vine. <sighs> now to us that may sound, ah, whatever, but imagine you are walking by the general conference office building in Maryland, Sister Gwen, and somebody in your group says, I am the true Adventist. That would cause for pause. This person didn't say, I am a, he says, I am the, which would mean every other Adventist ought to be like that, that would make you pause. See now, the Jews, they believed that because of their nationality, they were God's vineyard. And you can't blame them. If you go to Isaiah chapter 7, chapter 5 rather, if you go to Isaiah chapter 5, verses 1 to 7, you will find what they call a vineyard song. And it talks about how God did all of this thing for his vineyard. And verse 7 says, and the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is who? The house of Israel. So you couldn't blame them for thinking that they were God's true vineyard. As a matter of fact, a, a, a large golden vine decorated the temple. As a matter of fact, they had uh, uh, vines on their currency because they were proud that because of my national distinction, we are God's vineyard. But Jesus comes and he interrupts all of that on the walk from uh, the upper room to get somebody and says, no, 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 I am the true, the authentic, the enduring vine because you would remember that God was disappointed with his vineyard, Israel. They, they didn't live up to his expectation. They have failed. But Jesus says, I am the authentic vine. It's by being connected to me that you have salvation. It's not by being connected to a church. It's not by being connected to uh, being the elder, Elder Gwen. Those things don't bring salvation. They are good. But you've got to be connected to the true vine. The source of your ministry, Elder Gwen, will be remaining connected to the vine. The source of your, your joy and your happiness, my Kenwood family, is by being connected to the true vine. This is the last of Jesus' seven I am statements, but it's the only one that adds something after it. He says, uh, and my father is the vine dresser, the farmer, the grape grower. If you are an officiado of grape growing, he is the viticulturist. And again, that might fall and sound nice, but we have to understand the grape growing process. In the grape growing process, the most important figure is the vine dresser, the husbandman, the farmer, 
the grape grower, the viticulturists, because they can destroy an entire crop. As a matter of fact, uh, of vineyard owners, they will not let someone touch a vine for three years. They've got to go through training because they've got to learn when to cut, how to cut, what angle to cut at. They, they, they can destroy the entire vineyard. So Jesus says, my father is the vine dresser. He is in supreme control of the vineyard. I want to let you know, no matter what situation you're going through, no matter what you're experiencing, the divine viticulturist, he is in supreme control. Because Jesus says, and my father is the vine dresser. Stay connected to me. My father is the vine dresser. But now he says something that's really troubling, preacher. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Did you catch that? That means you can be in Christ and fruitless. You can be the preacher and fruitless. You can be the elders, fruitless. You can come and sit in these pews, Sabbath after Sabbath, and be fruitless. Attend every prayer meeting, fruitless. Attend every visitation, fruitless. Attend every ministry's convention, fruitless. Uh-oh, I feel, I feel the tension in the room. <laughs> My philosophy is you've got to balance tension and celebration. Yeah. You've got to disturb the comfortable, but you've got to comfort the disturbed. Yeah. So let me comfort somebody. The, the same word translated takes away can be translated he lifts up. Hey. Let me point what that means in the grape growing process. Because you see, storms blow through vineyards. And, and the trendles begin to run along the ground. But you know what? Grapevines cannot bear fruit running along the ground. So the viticulturist, you know what he does? He walks through. He walks through the vineyard. And the same word he takes, he takes away could be translated, he lifts up. So what they do is they walk through the vineyard with a bucket. They look for trendles running along the ground, Elder Gwen. And he picks that up. He cleans it and he restores it. I don't know. Life may have blown through your neighborhood. Life may have blown down your house. But Jesus, the divine viticulturist, he's walking through your vineyard and he's looking for you. You who needs to be lifted up and restored so that you can once again begin to bear fruit. Because when the trendles are running along the ground in the dust and the mud and the dirt, they can't bear fruit. Somebody here today may have stopped bearing fruit because you're running along the ground. The divine viticulturist is here to restore you, lift you up. He goes on to say, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes so that he may bear more fruit or she may bear more fruit. It's troubling because that means then Every branch gets the knife. Elder Gwen, you're being ordained as an elder today, but you still need to be pruned. You have been coming to church Sabbath after Sabbath, online, in person, but you still need to be pruned. Because those of you who are in the process of gardening knows that you've You've got to prune so that you can go from good to better to best. And, and pruning means that you, you might have to cut away some things that seem nice. Yes. Huh. You know, 
There are certain types of branches. There are certain types of branches that don't bear fruit. One such branch is called the sucker branch. The sucker branch. The sucker branch is a branch that's on the vine, connected to the vine, but it sucks nutrients. It, it sucks nutrients. It, it sucks nutrients, but it never bears fruit. It, it sucks nutrients, and you know what it does? It infects the other branches around it so that they begin to stop bearing fruit. I'm not a Kedwood preacher, but I have run into at some churches some members with sucker branch syndrome. They just suck the nutrients from the church. They, they suck the nutrients from the pastor. Elder Gwen, they'll suck the nutrients out of you, but they will never bear fruit. You've got to be careful with the sucker branches. Sucker branches, sucker branches, they describe gossip as prayer requests. Let me say it again, Elder Jackie. Sucker branches disguise gossip as prayer requests. Sucker branches sit at the door and under the guise of greeting. Let me stop there. Sucker branches. They're just waiting to take your name to the church board of the Gwen. But they never bear fruit. So you know what happens to the sucker branches? The, the divine viticulturist looks for sucker branches and he prunes and he prunes and he prunes and sometimes he has to cut the sucker branch way back so that they can once again start bearing fruit. I want to let you know if you are suffering from sucker branch syndrome, there's hope for you. You know if you're sucker, suffering with sucker brands, if everything has just become unpleasant for you, if church has no more joy, if your prayer life has no more meaning and power. Well, the preacher said to um, say it as I feel it. Some of you are online because you have sucker brand syndrome. <laughs> You have sucker breath. So, 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 so the impetus to now get in uh, out of your bed and into the shower and into your church clothes and into your car and, and drive to the, it's no longer there because it's convenient now to just stay home. We cannot forsake the assembling together. So if you can, if you can and you've been online, join us here at Kendallwood, live and in person. I got to move on. I got sucker branches. There's another type of branch that does not bear fruit. Sometimes you look at a grapevine and you'll see a branch. And it looks lush and it's green and it's, it's filled with leaves. And you would think, what a beautiful branch. It looks so good. The problem is, the problem is, the branch was meant to bear fruit not leaves. One theologian says that God, he's reaching through the leaves and he's looking for fruit. You know, we have some, some Christians that are like that. We look at them and it's just leaves. They come to church on Sabbath and they're wearing tailored suits and custom bow ties and handmade shoes and their car is clean and everything looks, they spill, they smell like, they talk like, they look like, act like a good event. They're even elders and preachers, but it's just leave. We can never confuse activity with connection. We can never confuse position with fruit. So while our positions that we, we attain through the power of God might be a result of our fruit, they're not our fruit. So Elder Gwen, do not look at your ordination as being an elder as the fruit. When we read your bio, when we read your bio, we can see the evidences of fruit in your life that has now led to this ordination. Let's never confuse <laughs> position with fruit. 
Let's not confuse activity with fruit. And I'm going to tell you, when you work for the church, when you're active in ministry, it's easy for us to begin to confuse results with fruit. So when you're going to get a lot of phone calls from members if you haven't been already. But you got to let them know sometimes you need some time to stay connected to the vine because if you're connected to the vine, you can't properly serve them. We have to be a people that are not just bearing leaves. And sometimes all of the energy we put into our positions, we put into our busyness, takes the energy that should be put towards bearing fruit and we, we spend it all on producing leaves. Yeah. But Gwen, be careful of that. Don't just be a leaf bearer. But if I'm honest with you, I can understand why some of us resort to bearing leaves. Because there's a division within, not Kendallwood, but some churches have leaf inspectors. They walk around the church and inspect the elders, uh, Elder Gwen. They expect the pastor, Marvelous Montague, to make sure they're bearing leaves. They don't care if they got fruit as long as they look like. <laughs> Members of my Kenwood family, we have to make sure that our leaders, uh, the members in the pew, that we're all bearing fruit. So we've got to make this a safe place for individuals to come and say, this is just leaves that you're seeing. I'm hurting. I'm having doubts. I'm experiencing the circumstances of life. I'm running along the ground. They're looking for people who can work with the divine with cultures to lift them up and restore them, Amen. not tear them down. Amen. And it becomes extremely concerning where elders become leaf inspectors. The role of the elder, Elder Gwen, is not to be leaf inspectors. It's to help the members bear fruit. Because like the theologian said, God is reaching through the leaves and he's looking for fruit. And if as an under shepherd, it's your job to work with the pastor to make sure Kendallwood bears fruit. There are no fruitless Christians. Did you know that? So yes, you could be solidly walking with God, connected to the vine, but you feel like God is pruning away some good stuff. He's pruning away good so you can get better. He's pruning away better so that you can get best. Amen. And some of the things that we have here in this life that seem good to us, good jobs, good relationships, gets pruned away. Why? Because Jesus' ultimate concern is that you and I would be in the kingdom. And some of these earthly trappings would keep us out of the kingdom. So he's got to take them away so that we can make it into the kingdom. Amen. Every branch gets the knife. But listen, the divine viticulturist is never closer to you than when he's pruning you. Because in order to prune, you've got to handle. You've got to be close to. So I don't know, somebody here today, somebody online, you might feel like you're being pruned by the divine viticulturist. And it's hot, almost unbearable. But I want to let you know that the divine viticulturist, he's close to you. And while you might not think 
that you can bear it. Why you might think it's too hard for you, too hot for you to handle, too cold for you to hold. Why you might feel that way. Remember the divine culture. He knows where to cut, where to cut, how much to cut. And he ultimately has the best for you in mind. But you know what some of us branches do, Elder Peart? Is we begin to compare ourselves to the next branch on the vine. Did you know there's about 12,000 varieties of grapes? I just thought they were red and green. <laughs> but there's so many different varieties. And the divine viticulturist, just like the earthly viticulturist, understands the personality of each branch on the vine. Amen. Did you know when the grape grower is going through his vineyard, he knows intimately each vine. He knows exactly what each vine likes. Because each vine, is each branch rather, is different. Same thing with us. We're all different. So I might not be able to preach like Elder Montague, but I can preach like Kevin Benta. I may not be able to sing like my daughter Cheyenne, but I'll sing in the bathtub. <laughs> I might not do it for you. But, 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 but each branch is different. Each branch has different capacity and capability. Not every branch will be a bumper branch. That means, they, you know, you just bear and bear and bear and bear. Some branches will bear a little bit less than others. But the divine viticulturist is not concerned with that, whether you bear enough or not. He's, he's concerned with you meeting your potential. Amen. Don't compare yourself with somebody else. And on the reverse of that, Elder Handy, some of us branches like to look down on other branches. Uh -huh. Because that branch is not as pretty as I am. That branch doesn't pray as much as I do. That branch does not volunteer at the food bank. That branch doesn't come to Sabbath school. That branch doesn't come to AY. That branch doesn't come to a prayer meeting. We look down on that branch, but we don't know that branch's situation. So, Elder Gwen is an elder. Don't look down on any branch. You work with the divine viticulturist. Even if that branch looks dead. The third type of branch that doesn't bear fruit is a dead branch. But the viticulturist looks at those branches and again he prunes it. And he prunes it. And he works with it. And he works with it. And he works with it. Do you know a new trend or a new grape branch can take up to three to five years to bear fruit? That's another sermon, but we have to be careful how we handle new believers. We run some new believers out of the church because we don't understand it might take them three to five years to bear fruit. So Elder Gwen, be patient with new believers in your role as elder. Branches that are no longer connected to the vine can bear leaves but never fruit. For a time, they will look like healthy vines bearing leaves. The truth is, perhaps someone sitting here, you're sitting here in church, but you're actually severed from the vine, and you're bearing leaves, so you look like you belong. But you know what the viticulturist does? He goes through the vineyard and he looks for these branches that are no longer bearing leaves because they've been separated from the vine. And you know what he does? He grafts them back in. Those of you who know about gardening will know about grafting. So, 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 if you have been separated from the vine, I want to let you know that Jesus is here. Uh, and he wants to graft you back in to the true vine so that once again you can begin to draw nutrients and, and bear fruit. The 
world is looking for fruitful Christians. You know what bothers me? Like most of you, I am, um, I'm not going to use the word addicted, but I'm somewhat dependent on Wi-Fi signals. <laughs> and it bothers me when I'm somewhere and I'm looking at my phone and it says connected, but no Wi-Fi. Ever happened to you? It'll say it connected, but no Wi-Fi. And that's what we're like when non-believers meet us, when they see a Christian with no fruit. You're a Christian, but no Jesus? No fruit? So you might be wondering, well, what, what are some of the fruits that I should be portraying? Well, let's talk about them. One thing you should have is your character should be fruitful. This, the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. Joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, gentleness, self-control. If we were to give you a spiritual checkup, Elder Gwen, how would you fare? Huh? My Kenwood family, if we were to give you a spiritual checkup based on the fruit of the Spirit, how would you fare? Is your character fruitful? You should be fruitful in your service. You should serve your local congregation. Not to bear fruit, but because you are bearing fruit. You should serve. You should give generously of your time, your talent, your treasure. Pastor Montague, you spoke about some needs we have here. Fruitful Christians give. You should be fruitful in your witness. How are you portraying Jesus to non-believers. Fruitful Christians, character, service, giving, witness. That's all that when I charge you on authority of the word of God, transform character, transform service, transform giving, transform witness. And by extension, this is not just the role of the pastor and the elders. This is all of our roles. All of our roles to be fruitful Christians. Jesus tells them that you are already clean. You're already purged because of my word. Elder Gwen, you've got to spend time in God's word. My Kenwood family, we've got to spend time in God's word. But it's not just enough to read God's word, to teach God's word, to believe God's word. We've got to live it. If God's word is not having a significant impact on how you and I live our lives, then so what? not just enough to read it, but it's got to clean us in such a way that it reflects in our daily living. We've got to internalize it. So we're going to spend time in God's word because God's word is what cleans us, what prunes us. Abide in me. Abide. It's a powerful word that John loves to use, abide. If you speak a more uh, uh, modern English, uh, remain, continue, dwell, persevere. And in the Greek, this is a command with ongoing effect. So it means to abide and keep abiding. It's not a one-time act. You've got to abide and keep abiding. You've got to remain and keep remaining. You've got to dwell and keep dwelling in the true vine. Because apart from the vine, we can do nothing. Some of us struggle with what's our purpose as a Christian. Our purpose is to bear 
fruit. Important passage of scripture in between the Last Supper, the upper room, and the garden. Jesus says to us, abide in me, for apart from me, you can do nothing. So the Gwen and my Kenwood family, I encourage you to stay connected to the true vine and go forward and bear fruit. Amen. Vignettes from the vineyard. God bless you. What a word. Amen. 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 God be praised. Amen. God be praised. Thank you, Elementa. Thank you so much. I'm going to ask at this moment that uh, Elder Gwen, please stand. The handy, you're going to also need to stand with her. And get it to Mike's, please. I'm going to invite Eleventa to join me here. So, and you can face the congregation. We are gathered together in the name of God and in accordance with the decision of our church to ordain as elder Gwendolyn Newell, who has been approved for the ministry of the word and the services of the church. My sister, you have been called to lead in serving and caring for the people of God and to work with them in overseeing the church, promoting its mission, proclaiming the gospel, and working for justice, mercy, and truth in the world. We believe that you have already considered these matters in the period of your presentation, and that you have fully determined to give yourself to this ministry so that as far as you are able, you will concentrate on the one thing and focus on this one thing and focus all your energy in this one direction. In order that we may know your mind and purpose and that you may be strengthened in your determination to fulfill your ministry, you must answer the questions put to you in the hearing of this congregation. Do you believe that God has called you to serve as an elder? I believe with all my heart that God has called me. Amen. Are you satisfied that the Bible is God's inspired word and that it contains all that is necessary for eternal salvation? I am satisfied and I do believe. Okay. 
I'm going to ask the Orden elders to stand as you read this part. I am the Lord being my helper. Are you devoting yourself in daily prayer, reading of the scripture, and to such other studies that deepen your faith and increase your love in reverence and service to God? Are you a custodian of the truth given by the Almighty God? And are you being very careful in dispensing such truth while re renouncing all he heresies and, and falsehoods? I am the Lord being my helper. Will you accept the guidance and discipline of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and submit yourself as a daughter to those who are appointed to have authority over you? I will. I will, the Lord being my helper. Will you, for Christ's sake, be merciful and care for the young, visit the care and care for the shut-ins, the sick, the discouraged, the disconsolate, and the bereaved persons who are under your charge? By the help of God, I will. Elder Newell, it is it is your duty to watch over and pray for all those committed to, to your care and to teach them preaching in the name of God and interpreting the scriptures to govern the church after the example of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and as outlined in the Holy Scriptures, know your people and be known by them. You are able to guide those who serve with you and enable them to fulfill their ministry and to be in all things a faithful elder and a wholesome example of the flock of Christ, for the flock of Christ. And all people everywhere, for here unto were you called. Glenn, they have a saying to say that good things are in concealed packages. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. On behalf of the elders, the board of directors, and the Kennedy members, we just want to congratulate you and to let you know that God has chosen you. Amen. And that it is noticeable, it is recognized that you are dedicated, committed mm. to God and to his work. Amen. May God continue to bless you. Amen.
Okay, let's do this together. May, May Almighty, Almighty God give you, you the will, will to do, give you the will to do, to do, do all things. these, grant, grant you grace, grace and power to perform them, that he may complete the good work he has, he has begun, begun in you, and keep you faithful unto, unto the coming of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, you have heard the solemn pledge of our dear sister, approved for ordination on behalf of the Candlewood Seventh-day Adventist Church and the World Church. Please signify your approval. Is it the will of the people that this sister, Gwendolyn Newell, be ordained as an elder of the church? Yes, we consent and commit her to the care and protection of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit abide with you always. Let everyone say, Amen. 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 I'm going to ask all the ordained elders. And if you are an ordained elder from a different church and you are here today, we ask that you come forward as we will encircle Elder Gwen and we'll have a prayer of consecration. Breathe on me, breath of God.
place our hands on Elder Gwen. I'm going to ask the congregation if they can bow their heads as we pray a short prayer of consecration for Elder Gwen. Father in heaven, we are so thankful for the opportunity you've given us to come together as co-laborers with you and with each other. We're thankful for the atoning death of your son, Jesus Christ, on the cross to reconcile humanity to a holy God. And we're thankful that in 2024, you are still calling leaders to be set aside for the work of the kingdom. Such one leader is Elder Gwendolyn Newell. We ask now, Father, that you will breathe upon her, that your hand will be upon her and her ministry, that you will put a hedge around her, that, Father, everything her hands touch will prosper, that you'll grant her all of her needs and even some of her wants, that her ministry will be one that lifts up Jesus, that draws people to Jesus, that nurtures people in Jesus. May she be one that abides in the true vine. May she have transformed character. May she display transformed service. May her giving be exemplary. And may she be a living testimony and witness that draws individuals into the kingdom. Spirit of the living God, breathe again on Elder Newell as she takes up this portion of her ministry. Go before her. Do miraculous things to her and through her. She makes herself available. She has answered the call. Here I am, God. Send me. So send her out now with the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. All right, you may rise. Elders, I'm going to ask you to just line to the side because we, you're going to be offering your congratulatory um, greetings right now as we, uh, Elevator, you'll join me here. In the hand, you can come on this side. All the elders, go on that side over there. Hello, Gwen. Congratulations. Amen. And now you're an ordained elder for the world church. Wherever you go in this world, and there's a Seventh-day Adventist church, you can serve as an elder. Amen. We are grateful to God that you have borne fruits and that your fruits today, this is also part of the fruit of your labor. And so may God continue to bless you, continue to use you, and you will continue to lead others to Jesus Christ. I'm going to ask the children of Elder Gwen to come forward as well, and you can greet your mom at this moment.
today the privilege is mine to present to you Elder Gwen Newell, our new ordained elder, and present her as a part of our elders council here in Candlewood. Elder Newell, we know that you have been very faithful in your work here in Kentwood, that you've been diligent in all you do. And I need to see you. <laughs> diligent in the things you are doing here day after day. And as a result of your dedication and service, we see it fit to recommend you for elder for dedication today. And we are proud to know that you have been such a help and so faithful in your work. May God continue to bless you as you continue to work in God's church. Thank you very much, Elder Handy. And so, church, we are grateful. I'm going to ask all the elder to, elders to stand to, at this moment of the Kennelwood SCA Church and just put your hands together and welcome your colleague into this. Thank you, elders. God bless you. One of the things in leadership that is very important is the support of family. Sometimes ministry can be so demanding, and sometimes families can feel as if they are robbed. But even in that regard, they are still supportive because they believe that the work of God should go forward. Elder Gwen, you have a wonderful family and they're here supporting you today. And I just want to say to you, continue in service for Jesus. I know you're a hard worker really hard worker and I just want to commend you for your hard work one of the things that I observed that I've, that I have observed about you is that you love people and you just have a, a natural connection with people and that is so awesome really awesome and continue that ministry of touching lives healing souls and leading others to Jesus Christ. As they mentioned about you're coming all the way from Beaverton. And sometimes when I look at it, even the weather, um, the weather has to be really bad to stop her. <laughs> Jesus, that kind of a person. And so may God continue to bless you. But there's one thing I'd say to you as a fellow minister. Always Take some time for you. Amen. Take time for you. And there has to be a time when an elder takes off. Because at the end of the day, your self-care is very important. And so take time for you. God bless you. And now the ministry of the family. Welcome. God bless you. Time just drifts away, and as I look back on the years, memories of happiness and bitter tears, through it all there was a common thread that cannot be ignored. You were there teaching me to be your servant, Lord. All along, your hand has been guiding me, shaping my life to be a beautiful song. All along, you've led me through the things that you do. 
joy in pain had a reason of its own now i realize that i was not alone the changing seasons of my life were not left up to chance lord i know you were working to fulfill your plan oh. Let's all stand, please. Thank you.
you are very happy for what God has said to us today. We are happy for Sister Gwen, Elder Gwen, that God remind us that all of us, we are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that we may declare the presence of him who called us out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once we were not a people, but now we are the people of God. Once we had not received mercy, but now all of us, we have received mercy. So go and be a blessing for others in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. No, no, songs. been blessed and would like to be a blessing to us, please visit our website and on the given, you will see ways to support our ministries. Thank you for coming. Have a blessed Sabbath and a productive week. God bless you.